Hi, I'm Kineng and today I'll be discussing ARP cache poisoning. First I'm going to overview ARP, then discuss ARP cache poisoning. Next I'm going to demonstrate an attack using ARP cache poisoning. And then end it off with what you need to do in order to protect yourself. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol and is essential to TCP IP. It's mainly used to communicate with other devices on your network. It does this by matching up IP addresses with the corresponding MAC addresses. And after a match has been made, it is dynamically stored in the ARP table, or ARP cache. ARP is centered around ARP requests and replies. For example, Computer A sends an ARP request throughout the network asking for a certain IP address. Computer B, which has the IP address that Computer A was looking for, replies with its IP address and MAC address. Because Computer A has correctly identified Computer B using the request, the IP and MAC address is now stored in the ARP cache. Although ARP is important and has little security, ARP dynamically accepts all ARP replies to its host and therefore updates its cache automatically. Anyone can send an ARP reply to any computer, forcing it to add a new entry into the cache. This is also called gratuitous ARP, where a device can send out an ARP reply with no request. Now this is how regular traffic flows, from one device to the next, and in this case a computer going to the internet, through the router, and vice versa. Here is a scenario where an attacker poisons the ARP cache. He sends a reply to the victim's computer with no request stating that he is the router by associating his computer's MAC address with the router's IP address. The victim's computer willingly accepts it and updates the cache. Now all traffic to the router from the victim will be flowing through the attacker. Next, the attacker sends a similar reply to the router stating that he is the victim's computer. With IP forwarding, the attacker now sees traffic coming in from both ways. This is an example of a man-in-the-middle attack. Alright, so now we begin the demonstration of ARP cache poisoning. In this demonstration, I will be using Backtrack 5 along with the Windows 7 virtual machine. First, we're going to edit the editor configuration file. All we need to do is delete the comments so that the lines aren't commented out because they will be used later. Then you save it. Next, we're going to use Nmap to scan the network for our victim. The Windows 7 VM will be our victim for this demonstration. Next, let's set the computer into forwarding mode, and as you can see it's zero, which means that it's disabled. So all we need to do is change it to a 1 to enable it. Next, I'm going to use the lines that I uncommented earlier. All this does is it redirects HTTP traffic port 80 to another port, which I will be listening to, port 8080. Now I'm going to use EdderCap to ARP cache poison the victim. There's the router and the victim's IPs. So essentially what I just did is what I described before, make the router believe I'm the victim and the victim believe I'm the router. So here's the victim's PC, and now we're going to Gmail, and you can see that this connection is untrusted, which means we are poisoning the victim, and at this point the victim is poisoned, so you could start sniffing for information, but I'm going to take it a step further because attackers would normally want information with more security. And here's another tool that could potentially do damage. It's called SSL Strip and basically it takes away all SSL encryption on sites. And so you can see we're listening on port 8080. 
where I redirected the traffic to. So let's check the victim's PC again and this time let's try Yahoo Mail. And I know it has HTTPS. So let's try this test account and log in. Notice the S is not there. And I'm in. And regular users or most users wouldn't even notice. Because it looks exactly the same. It is the same, just without the SSL. And so, let's check what we have. And there it is. We have the login and the password in plain text. With the SSL gone. Alright, and finally on how to defend against ARP cache poisoning. So first off, ARP can only be exploited locally, so any attacker must be on site. They must be there physically, and it can't be remotely exploited, so just make sure you have a strong secure network. Next, you can use static ARP tables, which prevents ARP spoofing altogether, but that means you have to individually enter each and every IP address and MAC address of every device on the network into your ARP table, which is not efficient in large environments. You can also use ARP monitoring tools to monitor any changes in ARP tables. And the most important thing is for administrators to watch changes in clients and monitor the clients because if they can't get in, they can't do any harm. Thanks for watching.